Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. <clears throat> there is nothing too bad, too hard, too long in your life that God cannot enable you to overcome. Be it failures, sins, terrible sins, be it addictions, whatever the case might be, money problems. Uh, the enemy always tries to convince you that it's hopeless. It's, and he always portrays it actually worse than what it is. That's how he is. He's trying to overwhelm you. But with God, say it out loud, with God, with God. Nothing, is nothing is impossible. Nothing is too hard, is too hard. For, my God. for my God. Now, do you believe that? Yes. Then the thing somebody said was impossible, it's impossible for them, but not with God. Right? Not with God. And the key is believing that. And so let's look to him today and allow him to show us uh, what he can do and the thing that uh, can be possible if we look to him. Father, all of us agree together as touching this, asking you for the anointing, asking you for the moving and working of your Holy Spirit, uh, quickening to us your words and your will and your light and your truth and your way answers for today. We ask for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look please in Hebrews, the third chapter again. We're continuing in our study that we're calling Overcoming Unbelief. In Hebrews 3, 7, he says, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you'll hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. We see the word stubborn. We see the word stiff-necked. Um, this is this, the opposite of yielding is what unbelief does. And um, it, it's an evil thing. It's a bad, bad thing. And, and you see it in people all the time. The Bible says in Ephesians that the spirit of, of disobedience is what you know, all the unbelievers and all the ungodly world is under. And that shouldn't be a shock because Satan, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the rebel, rebellious one, the defiant one, he is called the God of this present world the God of this world. And so he, he's influencing everybody that's not yielding to the Spirit of God. They will have this defiant, stubborn, you can't make me attitude. And they don't realize it. They think they're just that way with each other and with men, but they're that way with God. And that puts people in a place where God himself can't help them. Not that he doesn't have the power to do it. Not that it's not his will to do it. It's just he's not going to break his own word. And he's not going to override your will and force you to do something against your will. So that means people are allowed to, and most of the planet is, rebellious. But you don't have to be. Right? And I don't have to be. Everybody said out loud, I choose, I choose to, submit to submit to my God. To my God. I, choose I choose to yield to Him, to yield to him. His, Spirit, His Spirit, His Word, His, Word. His, Lordship. His Lordship. Amen. Amen. He won't make you, but if you will, oh, He'll get involved. Hallelujah. He said, behold, I stand at the door. And knock, if anybody will open the door and, and let me in, I'll come in. Hallelujah. I'll come in. 
and I'll, I'll sup with you. I'll fellowship with you. I'll be involved. It's, it's sad and, and deception that so many people blame so many things that are bad on God. When the truth is, the reason all these things are going on, God's not involved in their life. He's not even involved. He's wanted to come in, but they won't let him. He's knocked, but they won't answer the door. They won't open the door. But if you'll let God in and let him get involved in your life, things change. Hallelujah. Things change. You can have miracles. Things people don't even understand how they happen. Somebody say, that's me. That's me. So verse 12, he said, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Let's go to Numbers 20 again, continue in our study of this 13th event, episode of unbelief. They got to the wilderness of Zen and they had no water, no water. What is this class? This is a challenge. Is that right? This is a challenge. <laughs> you will be tested on this material. Not by me necessarily, but in life. Every challenge is what? It's an opportunity. For me to what? For you to what? To demonstrate to God that we trust Him. Right? And, and He... He'll know it. He'll see it. He sees your heart. And then he'll hear what comes out of your mouth and see how you respond. And here they made the wrong choice again for the 13th major time <laughs> since they left Egypt. Now, they did it before they left Egypt. <laughs> We're laughing, but it ain't funny. They all died in the desert. Wrong, young, when they could have been having no water problems at all. Is that right? They could have been over there at their own house, you know, taking a bath. Is that right? Tub full of water. How about that? Tub full of water, soaking in their own tub. There are all their cows and camels and sheep, all the water they want, fat and happy. Hmm? Instead, they're in this miserable spot, dry, bleak, desolate. Remember, we, we quoted from Psalms uh, previous class that the rebellious would dwell in a dry land, the scripture said. That's where they are. And we talked about what murmuring, one of the definitions of murmuring is to remain permanently. Did they ever get out of the desert, this bunch? Mm -mm. Did they ever quit murmuring and complaining? No. Is there a connection? Absolutely. Absolutely. They wouldn't quit doubting. They wouldn't quit complaining. They wouldn't quit blaming. And they never got out of their dry, desolate, bleak subsistence. Unbelief kept them out. Somebody said out loud again, not me. Not me. By the grace of God. I don't have to act like this, and I won't. The scripture said they, they came to the desert of Zin. People abode in Kadesh. Miriam died there and was buried there. This is Numbers 20, verse 1. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and the people chode with Moses. And spake and said, now this word uh, chode is a form of the word chiding, and it, 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 it has to do with strife and wrangling and arguing and fighting. And this we need to know about unbelief because the very title of this episode is The Waters of Strife. And that's what happened here, and that's what uh, one of the big characteristics of unbelief. Unbelief is an arguer. It's combative. 
It's disrespectful. It's unthankful. It wants to fight and, and push and demand and pressure. Are they trying to pressure Moses and Aaron here? Can you see this? They, uh, they chode with Moses. What are they doing? Are they being nice? Not at all. Are, are they being, uh, is their tone mean? I, I, are they being pushy and demanding? Now, why am, I, why am I saying all this again? That's unbelief. Can you see why I'm spending so much time on this? Because people are doing these kind of things and acting like, yeah, but I have a lot of faith in God. Faith in God don't act like that. Right? Faith in God does not act like this. No. When you're pushy and demanding and arguing and fussing and fighting, that's unbelief. You don't act that way when you trust God. We which have believe do enter into rest. Rest. Faith in God is rest in God. Even if people are acting like heathens around you. Even if your own people are just trying to give you fits. When you have faith in God, you look up, you look, you look up from them. <laughs> you know, God, <laughs> this feels like a mess, but I know you've got me. Huh? I know you've got me. And even if these folks don't go with your program, you will work it out somehow. If it takes getting some new folks, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. But uh, uh, faith, say, say it out loud, faith, faith. Puts, no puts no pressure on people. on people. Did they try to pressure Moses and Aaron over and over again? Listen to what they're doing right now. They, the people chode with Moses. And they, they spoke and they said, Would God we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. Now this is talking about just the previous couple of accounts that we studied. Because at um, Korah's rebellion and in the plague that broke out, 15,000 of them died. 15,000 died. And so they said, we should have just died, you know, before the Lord. Before the Lord. <laughs> and the people of the Lord. And uh, notice that how many times even unbelieving people want to talk about God. It's irritating. <laughs> right? Don't do it. <laughs> of course, don't be the unbelieving people. But... Uh, they, you know, yeah, the Lord brought us out here to die. He did not. He did not. You are misrepresenting him. We're the, you, you, you're going to kill the people of the Lord. The people of the Lord. This is a subtle thing the enemy does. Because what he wants to do is even non-believers to see that and hear that and just be disgusted. Is that right? With people that call themselves the people of God. And think I don't want anything to do with them. Well I don't either. Right? And I is the people of God. <laughs> right? Uh-uh. Because -uh. it's not right. This phony, false, disrespectful joke. In the middle of them being rebellious against God. They're talking about the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. And, and the Lord himself it, we, we read in Psalm 95, he was disgusted with some of this. And they're still using his name. You know, that's why one of the commandments is, you should not use the name of the Lord your God in vain. What does that mean? People use God, the Lord, as a byword, as a, just a f religious jargon that they've gotten used to using and throwing in. No, our God is a great God. And if you're calling his name or referring to him, you need to be talking to him respectfully or about him. Respectfully. Is that right? Not this religious junk. And so they said, uh, uh, 
Would God we had died? Well, what do you mean, would God? If it's up to God, you'd be over in the promised land. <laughs> right? <laughs> mm. Would God we had died? Wish we had died when they died over there with Korah. Wish I'd have just died with them. You're a liar. You're a liar. Reason you're upset now, because you think you might die. Huh? <laughs> What's there to be? I mean, your wish is coming true. No water. You're about to starve to death. Is that right? Hey, wish fulfilled. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So much dishonesty here. So much dishonesty. We, we mentioned this before. Never, ever, ever say, I wish I was dead. Never. Don't say such a thing. Life is a gift. Being able to exist, it's a gift, right? You're not making yourself breathe. You didn't make the air you're breathing. Is that right? It's not your gravity that's holding your feet on the ground. Uh, existence is a gift. Life is a gift. And this life is really short, really short. No need to rush it. You'll be out of here soon anyway. You live to be a hundred plus. It comes and goes like a flash. Say it out loud, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For giving me life. For giving me life. And breath. And breath. And every good thing. And every good thing. I'm glad. I'm glad. I exist. I exist. And I know you. And I know you. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. That's what the Master said. This is life eternal, that they may know you, Father God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That is life, is knowing him, knowing Jesus. So uh, they said, would God we had died when our brethren died before the Lord? And why have you brought up the congregation of the Lord into the wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? Why did you bring us out here to die out here? That's being dishonest. It was never God's plan for them to stay there. Never God's plan for them to die out there. And yet, they have become blinded to this. You don't keep doing this the way they did it unless you come to a point where you believe this. And see, this is the danger of not walking in light that you have. Go to James, if you would. Book of James. And um, notice in the first chapter... James 1.22. James 1.22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. What, what's the result if you know it but you don't do it? Deceiving your own selves. Now see, you can't even blame the devil for this. <laughs> do you see that? If you know something, how many remember the scripture also said here in James that to him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. The Lord knows what you know, knows what you don't know. And so when you see things clearly, but you you're, want to be proud, you, you want to be stubborn, and you go, like, well, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to listen to that. I don't want to see that. Well... You keep pushing the truth aside, the enemy will bring you a lie to believe and listen to. And if you go with that long enough, there'll come a point where you forget you ever knew the truth. And you become deceived. Deceived means you believe a lie is true. If you knew it was a lie, you wouldn't be deceived. Keep reading. He said, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass or a mirror. He beholds himself, goes his way and straightway or immediately forgets. Everybody say forgets. Forget. He forgets what he saw, what manner of man he was. But whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty... And continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his doing. Who's going to be blessed? 
the person that keeps what they saw and doesn't forget it and conforms to it and acts on it and does it. Then God confirms his word and that's blessing. Amen. Was there a time, going back to uh, Numbers 20 now, was there a time where these people, these two million people out here in the desert, did they see the glory of God when he brought them out of Egypt with a mighty hand? Huh? Healed their bodies, put money in their pocket? Did they see the glory of God when the Red Sea opened up? Whew. And when it closed on their enemies, did they see the glory of God when he turned the undrinkable waters of Marah into sweet? Did, did they see the glory of God when water came out of the rock before and when manna fell out of the sky? Could they see the potential? Certainly they had to see it. But what did they, what'd they do? They saw it and then they went, yeah, but we're all going to die out here like this. Was it a choice? Yes. Come on, can you see it's a choice? Is it a choice with every human being on the planet? Yes. And see, God is not unrighteous. He gives everybody some light. And if you, if you receive it and keep it and walk in it, he'll give you more. Huh? And if you walk in that, he'll give you more. He'll give you more. And I don't care if you were born to 10th generation idol worshipers in the worst part of the planet. You look up as a boy or a girl in the night sky and you go, man, there must be a real God up there. And he'll reveal it to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. There will be a confirmation in your spirit. And if you'll accept it and walk in it, he will lead you into full salvation in Jesus. Hallelujah. He'll bring you all the way out. But if at any point you go, well, yeah, but that doesn't fit in with my family and my religion and this and that. And so if you, if you cast it aside, yeah, but this. Can you see what happened? They saw it for a moment. But immediately forgot what they saw and it was stolen from them. And you wind up being deceived. Now here in, in Numbers 20 for the 13th major time. They're blaming Moses and Aaron. And they're saying, why, verse 4, why have you brought up the congregation of the Lord? Can you see? They're trying to make themselves out to be holy. Yes. Right? We're the congregation of the Lord. And you, low lives, <laughs> have done nothing but lead us into sand with no water. This is dishonest. Because there was a, at least a point where they knew. When they're all out there and the 12 spies came back, you know, at Kadesh Barnea. And they're right there at the border to go into the promised land. Are you going to say they didn't realize we're at a juncture? Whether we go in or whether we don't? Yeah, they knew it. But instead of taking responsibility for their own mistakes and sins... They blame others. And the problem with that is you cannot get out then. You're not going to be forgiven for something you won't even admit you did. Is that right? You won't even ask for mercy for it. You won't, the Lord, would have the Lord have forgiven them? Would he have given them mercy? He always has. Every time anybody's ever asked him. Certainly he would, but they wouldn't ask. That's why they never made it out of the desert. Because they wouldn't quit doing this. Blaming others is a characteristic of unbelief. Hmm? How many would agree blaming others is a deceptive thing to do? Is that right? It's a dishonest thing to do. It's a hypocritical thing to do. The problem is you do it enough and you'll forget the truth that you saw. And you can come to absolutely believe they're my problem. See, that's why Cain killed Abel. Abel never did anything to him. All he did was love God and give his best to God. 
And in Cain didn't do that. And so his offering wasn't received. But then Cain got to looking at his brother Abel and decided it was Abel that made him look bad. It was Abel that embarrassed him. Abel wasn't thinking about Cain when he offered that to God. But then Abel wound up murdering his own, I mean Cain wound up murdering his own brother, Abel. Over what? See, he came to believe a lie. Can you see that? While he was fuming, and that's why the Bible says be angry and don't sin. And don't let the the sun go down on your, your anger. Why? Don't let it build day after day and week after week. When you just keep thinking about, you know, yeah, Abel did that on purpose. He did that right in front of God and mom and dad and everybody. And he did that just to show me up. And Lies, lies, lies. But after a while, even though you knew the truth in the beginning, after a while, what starts happening? You start believing the lies. And you've got to believe something pretty strong to go murder your brother. Right? But it was all lies. It all, everybody said out loud, I refuse, I refuse to, blame to blame others. By the grace of God, by the grace of God I'll take responsibility, I'll take responsibility for, my for my own mistakes and walking in the light, in the light for, myself. for myself. Enlighten my eyes, Lord. My eyes. Help me to see, me to see what's, true what's true and what's right, what's right. and what's light. What's light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's how you stay free. Well, our time's up again. Let's say it like we do sometimes. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I am strong in faith. You like saying that? I like saying it. Say it again. I'm strong. One more time. I am strong in faith, giving glory to God. Amen. We'll see you again next time here in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941 Seven zero two seven three nine zero. 